Hi, this is Brandon from Indianapolis, Indiana. I'm 33 years old and I am rebuilt. What is going on, everybody? Guys, welcome to the Rebuilt Man podcast. We have a special episode here for you today. This is an interview series that we started back in 2021, and it was a YouTube exclusive for us back then because the podcast wasn't around, but we're so excited to bring it back to you the I Am Rebuilt series. And a little bit of background about what these conversations are is this is highlighting some of the most successful transformations that we've had through our program. So we've done 13 episodes up today. You can find all of those on our YouTube channel. But today we have episode 14 of the I Am Rebuilt series coming at you on the Rebuilt Man podcast. And we have an incredibly powerful transformation. I'm so honored to bring to the show here today, Brandon Boiling. Brandon, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thanks, Frank, for having me. Yeah, it's it's uh it's really an honor that you uh, you you offer this to me as an opportunity to share my story. So thank you. Absolutely, man. Well, you know, we talk a lot about our mission here with Rebuilt Recovery is eradicating pornography addiction truly from the world, man. You know, I think uh, most of the guys hearing this understand that this is not an isolated issue. This is not something that is on a small scale, that there's a massive epidemic of men across the world. And, you know, I'm not naive to believe that I'm going to accomplish that all by myself. And one of the things we talked about uh, through the program as you kind of get towards the second half is like, how do you play a role fundamentally in helping other men get free? And I think sharing our stories, you know, I think finding people that we can have open and vulnerable conversations with. So I'm really honored and grateful to have you here with us today. Uh, Brandon, if you could, man, take us back to, you know, a little bit over three months ago, you know, you were struggling, you had been caught up in this issue for quite some time. I know it had even made its way into kind of impacting your relationships and your marriage with your wife. So talk to us about where you were but prior to, to reaching out, how, how long have you been struggling and what, if any things had you tried prior to joining us here at the rebuilt recovery? Yeah. So, uh, you know, three months ago was really kind of this, it was, it wasn't even myself that reached out to you. It was my wife who approached you first actually. So, but on my behalf, because I was, uh, I was ashamed and, uh, I was a downtrodden man at the time, man. I, I, uh, it was the lowest point, honestly, in our, in our relationship, uh, in, in our marriage, because I had been found out multiple times. Um, and this was kind of like the final straw that really sent it over. I was going to lose my family. Um, and it's something that I just can't, I can't have that. Right. I, I'm, I'm really grateful to her for her grace and, and for what she gave to me in that time, because she did look for resources for me because she understood it as an addiction, um, as something that while I am, I was making decisions in that, in that time frame, it was guided by something that was almost out of my control. So, um, I'm really, that's where I was. I was at the lowest point. Um, and I couldn't lose my family anymore. So reaching out to you, I, I was also kind of, you know, I, I had tried kind of, you know, cold turkey, but telling myself that it wasn't really a big deal, you know, telling myself that I wasn't, I, I didn't even consider it an addiction. It hadn't even, that word hadn't even crossed my mind. So, you know, for that to be the case and for me to come to terms with it was, I mean, the, the biggest step, but the hardest step, um, you know, in terms of getting me on the right track. So that's where I was when I, before I, I had even heard about you guys. Yeah, man. No, I appreciate, you know, the openness and vulnerability there, man. You know, it's, it's something I get a lot of is I have a lot of wives and women that reach out to me and oftentimes it's, they haven't had that conversation yet with the husband. You know, I think prior to her reaching out, you guys had at least kind of talked about some of these things I've had probably close to hundreds of women at this point reach out because they know their husband is struggling, but their husband isn't willing to accept it. So I want to recognize and really, you know, honor you here today because yes, yeah, she reached out initially, but you kind of followed it up with taking the action. Um, you said that she had kind of reached the lowest point there. Was there something specific that had happened? Um, Cause I know this wasn't something that you just started struggling with. So was there a specific event or incident that kind of caused that last point three months ago? to bring you to the lowest point? Yeah, there really was. There was one day and I still remember it. It was December 5th. Um, you know, here we are on leap day, you know, February 29th, but, uh, um, you know, December 5th, it was the hardest day of my life. And, you know, because I, it, I was just carrying on my normal day, uh, you know, 
sneaking things, um, not being honest, not being truthful with myself. And, 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 you know, my wife walked in on me doing something I definitely should not have been doing. So, um, that was a, it was a literally like a slap in the face moment for both of us where she was ultimately completely, you know, betrayed. And for me, I was the most shameful, you know, completely, uh, you know, just, I was not, I was a shell of a man. I was a shell of who I really am. And so that was really the point where I knew I needed to do something and we had real conversations and I took real steps to put that in place. You did, man. You did. And I think sharing those dates there, man, shows how quickly things can kind of turn around uh, for you. You know, maybe a guy listening to, to this right now or seeing this hasn't had that point where he's been walked in on. But I think all of us have had that point of shame, right? You know, where we know the things that we're doing aren't aligned with our highest selves, you know, whether it's the minute we shut the laptop off or that look that we give ourselves in the mirror. So I, I'm, I'm so appreciative that you kind of shared that in your openness and, and, and vulnerability. You know, it's interesting, something that we talked about a couple of nights ago on our, our kind of final wrap up call was some of the hesitations or maybe even some of the doubts. You had mentioned you kind of just maybe never really looked at this as an addiction. You kind of gone the cold turkey route. Um, talk to us about maybe some of the hesitations you had, or even some of the doubts about joining a program like this and how, if any way, did you even get past any of that early on? Well, what, you know, when I finally had that, that confrontation, um, in that point, and, and it took, you know, a couple of days for it to all sink in and to realize the steps that needed to happen. Um, I finally admitted to myself and out loud that I had an addiction. Um, and then, you know, looking for, you know, like, like, uh, sexaholics anonymous things like that where you know it's a 12 step type thing um i was kind of stuck on the number of days you know early on especially where i was like well if you know that's what these programs strive for is well how long can you go without and you know my skepticism was i've done it before i've done months at a time before but i've always fallen back in it so what how is this going to be different right um but i do remember the moment that i decided to to take the leap and, and go with the program. It was the night before we started. I was out to dinner. I took my wife out to dinner because she had just gotten uh, a, a big accomplishment at work. And so we, we dropped the boys off at the in-laws and, and we went out to dinner, just the two of us. And so um, we were talking, you know, sitting there at dinner and talking about it. And she was like, so what are you, what are you hesitating about then? And I said, I really can't tell you, uh, you know, like it's just, just that anxiety of confronting it, you know, something I hadn't confronted in that way. So that was, I, that was the moment that I, I jumped in and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot as, as many, as you know, as much skepticism as I may have had going in thinking that it was just another quick fix type thing. Um, I quickly realized that wasn't the case, especially with the group of guys that we had um, in the support group that we built. So. No, absolutely, man. Uh, I appreciate, I appreciate that. And I think, you know, a lot of guys, resonate with that, right? It's almost, you know, this fear, this doubt of like, okay, well, what's going to be different? You know, it's, and, and, and oftentimes it's even trying to envision a life without it, right? Like you said, I've gone streaks before and nothing changed. So what's going to be different this time? And it, it takes that leap of faith, man. It takes that, you know, hey, I'm willing to surrender completely to this program. I'm willing to surrender completely to this group of men and have these necessary conversations, you know, and you even, you even gave the dates here, you know, it was December 5th and here we are February 29th, not a long period of time, but I mean, I can even see it in looking at you today versus the first man that I saw on our initial talk. It's a different man. So talk about some of the experience that you had in just a three month window and you know, how a did the program maybe kind of outline the steps for you? Um, and what have you felt now at this point? to set yourself up for this lifetime of freedom? Uh, you know, coming in, I think that the biggest thing that, you know, helped establish the routine, obviously, is is the daily five, right? Is being great, you know, recording our gratitude, is making sure that we're reflecting on what we are doing in general, and, you know, taking into account what is happening in our lives that leads us to that. Um, going on a walk, you know, uh, you know, taking the dog on a walk, enjoying ourselves and immersing ourselves in nature, uh, 
not hitting snooze. Not going to lie, didn't always follow that one. I got two young boys. And so, you know, getting up at 5 a.m. is a bit of a struggle sometimes, but I'm there. And, uh, you know, then just making sure that we are, uh, you know, that, those homework assignments, too. You know, as a former teacher, it's it's funny that I, I'm not always the biggest com, you know proponent of homework, but this one was these types of assignments were something that I definitely knew that when they were going to pay off, um, and that I was going to be able to reflect on, share with my you know my my brothers going through this, and then uh, be able to utilize what they have and how they learned, and then uh, use that to help structure my my path forward too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great, man. You know, speaking to some of the work, some of the coursework, and then even the community and the conversations that we, that we have, what did Brandon learn about Brandon over the course of his 12 weeks? Who he learned a lot. Um, I definitely learned some of the traits that I have that, um, I'm not too proud of. I think my most recent one was that I don't have to speak for other people, um, especially in certain situations. Um, you know, I shared with you guys, it was just a small situation. Uh, my, my wife and I, again, uh, went out to a nice dinner, a nice, really nice steakhouse here in, t in town. And um, her steak wasn't cooked exactly how she wanted it. Um, and so I said something to the waiter, waiter, even though she said it was fine, she was going to deal with it. And I said, yeah, but it's not what you want, right? And then it made her super uncomfortable. And it pushed her beyond a, a level that she, she, she broke down, you know, it, it just in that moment. Because of something some, that I felt was so small, but was actually really significant. Um, so something like that, I learned that um, I definitely don't know uh, as much about myself, or I didn't know as much about myself as I thought, um, and that I <clears throat> I really need to take into account what the folks around me are telling me. Um, I'm a strong-headed dude, and I tend to. Uh, not ignore adv the advice of others, but maybe take a little bit longer to heed it, uh, you know, in the moment. So a lot of times I struggle with that. And that's something that I've definitely uh, learned from this experience, too, is to humble myself a bit, step back and listen. Um, that's those are probably the biggest things I learned about myself is that uh, there's some traits in me uh, that I needed to address and that I needed to overcome. Yeah. Yeah, that's powerful, man. Um, you mentioned two boys. You know, and you made an announcement about halfway through the program that there's a, a third on the way. And, you know, we, you, you did share with us, I think, a couple of weeks back that that's going to be a boy as well. Uh, she's going to have, you know, testosterone driven household coming up. And, you know, you even have some career changes coming up as well. So, you know, what are you looking forward to now? You know, you're you're free at this point. You know, you haven't looked back since the day that you you know reached out. Um, you had the tools, you have the mindset, you have the character traits necessary to live this out for the rest of your life. So what are you most excited about, man, looking forward into the future? I think I'm most excited about being there for my family, um, just being present because it was such a burden on my, on my mindset. Uh, you know, literally the chemistry in my brain, it was tearing me down. It was exhausting me having this addiction and now looking back and, you know, going the entire program with no relapses, um, you know, focusing on the good things that I have around me. Um, all those things, I'm looking forward to just cherishing them and being more present and obviously raising my family and uh, seeing all these boys grow up to be strong young men without the uh, without the addiction that I had. Brandon, that's powerful, man. And that's, you know, that ability to be present in our homes and be present in our relationships is something we've heard repeated over and over again with men that have actually succeeded. So, you know, I'm so glad that's something that you're feeling and experiencing. It definitely was, you know, something I felt back in 2019, just my ability to connect and be intimate and just be present in the moment in any relationship in my life. And so I'm really excited, you know, looking forward to the future for you guys as well. Uh, wrapping things up, man, let's uh, talk to Brandon three months ago or all the guys that are hearing and watching this right now, maybe they're on the fence as well. You know, maybe they haven't even raised their hand and said, Hey, I know I got this problem, man, but I'm not even calling it an addiction yet. Or, you know, I've been trying to white knuckle this thing. I've, you know, I'm hesitant about reaching out or I'm hesitant about even having a conversation with another man because how he's going to be viewed to me. What would you say to the man that right now that is perhaps maybe on the fence about reaching out or possibly even joining our program or any program that's out there? Um, I looking back at myself or anybody else out there who's struggling like I was when I first met you guys is for stop it, like stop being so hard headed, stop acting like you're the only one who's going through this and stop acting like you don't need help. Um, because reaching out, like even in something as simple as like something at work, 
I struggle to ask for help. And so the the hardest part is always getting that first step out of the way, humbling yourself and saying, you know what, I'm so ashamed of who I've become that I really need to take this step. Um, and unfortunately, it took me nearly losing the family that I had built with my wife to realize that I had a serious, serious addiction that was affecting way more than just myself. And so ask people for help, ask people, you know, what they do to help overcome struggles, find someone who maybe has a similar struggle and be vulnerable with them. Um, Open up yourself, you know, go into it with an open mind, even if you do have a healthy bit of skepticism in there, you know, Make sure that you're you're taking it seriously. Make that you make sure that you reach out and you listen to the people around you because they're the ones who are going to care for you the most. You know, reach out to family. I know throughout the program we had an assignment where whenever somebody who you hadn't spoken to in a while pops into your mind, just reach out to them. That's one of that was one of my favorite things because I reconnected with some of my old buddies. Um, unfortunately, right in that same time, one of my buddies who I've known since I was in kindergarten, we still talk from time to time. His mom passed away. And so just reaching out to those people who might be struggling, it's, it's the hardest thing, but it really does make a difference. And at the end of the day, man, that's what matters most, man, you know, is, is the people in our lives, the relationships, who we can touch on a, on a daily basis. And you never know, man, what somebody's kind of kind of going through. You know, I think it's embedded into the ma- male DNA to like have this ego where it's like, we got this. And, you know, there's those always jokes. It's like the guy's never going to stop and ask for directions when he's, you know, on a, on a trip. Obviously, we have GPS stuff now, but um, there's nothing weak in admitting your struggles. There's nothing weak in asking for help. One thing we've prided ourselves on is providing safe place with real strong driven men like like Brandon and all the guys that are part of our community guys. So it starts with the first step. Uh, That's all it takes here. And uh, guys, if you're on the fence or you're interested in having a conversation down here below on the video on the YouTube side, or if you're listening on the podcast audio side, put a link uh to our coaching application page guys there's uh there's no cost to just have a conversation uh we can talk about what's going on and we can perhaps maybe answer some questions or maybe help guide you in the path whether that's working with us or going out there and tackling this thing on your own so click the link down there uh fill the application out book a call and i'd be happy to have a conversation with you about what freedom what success and what transformation can look like in your life but brandon man i appreciate your time here today man uh it's been an absolute honor Uh, to watch you grow and transform. And I know that this is just the beginning of your new life as a father, as a husband, as a man that is going to have great impact in his home, but more importantly in the world, man. So appreciate your time here today, guys. We love you guys. Uh, Fill the link out or click the link, fill the application out if you want to have a conversation. And uh, thanks for joining us here at The Rebuilt Man. Uh, We love you guys. We'll see you in the next one.